This is a mini hydroelectric generator that I got off of Amazon. The concept is simple. Connect it to your garden hose and it's supposed to generate 10 watts of power at 12 volts. But when I tested it, I barely got one watt. For reference, that's not even enough to charge your phone, which usually takes around five watts. So that got me thinking, how much power can I actually generate with my garden hose? And in this video, I'm going to take on the challenge of building my own mini hydroelectric generator to find out. The first thing I needed to do was figure out how much power my hose could deliver. To do this, I just needed two things, the pressure and the flow rate. To measure pressure, I connected my hose directly to a pressure gauge. And for the flow rate, I timed how long it took to fill up a gallon jug. With these numbers, I plugged them into this hydraulic power formula and found that my hose can deliver around 52.2 watts of power. This calculation gives us the theoretical maximum power we could get with a 100% efficient turbine. But realistically, I'm not expecting to hit anywhere even near that mark. I would be happy with anything that's even in the 50% efficiency range. Now, with that in mind, now it's time to move on to choosing the right type of turbine. After some research, I decided to go with a Pelton turbine. It's perfect for high pressure, low flow setups, exactly what a garden hose provides. The Pelton wheel's spoon-shaped cups split a water jet in half, causing the water to make a U-turn and transfer almost all of its energy into rotational force. This unique design maximizes efficiency, making it ideal for a small scale application like this one. Now that I knew the important spoon design, I could start creating it. I decided to 3D print it because it gives me precise control over the geometry and lets me customize the design easily. Now that I had a solid design for these spoons, the next big question was how I'm actually going to attach them to the wheel. As I sorted out wheel dimensions and connection methods, I also tested the spoon's performance and it seemed like it passed. I had two options. The first was to use screws and bolts, and while this worked, it was tedious to assemble and frankly, it did not look good. The second was rivets. These were much cleaner and faster to assemble, but if the dimensions were not correct, the 3D part would crack. And after some testing, I decided to go with the rivets. I avoided cracking the material by properly dimensioning the parts, and this just looked so much cleaner than the bolts. And here's the finished wheel. This variation is the 23 spoon version, but I also made ones with 12 and 18. So now with the Pelton wheel done, the next thing I need to do is create a frame for it. And I'm gonna do that using 2020 aluminum extrusion. I began by laying out all the components I plan to use, giving me a rough idea of the frame size needed for the design. Now, something super important when dealing with aluminum extrusion and 3D printed parts is being able to make precision cuts. Being even a few millimeters off can really throw off the 3D design. And for example, that's just the width of the blade. So with that in mind, let's continue the build. Once everything was cut, assembling the frame was pretty straightforward. I used corner brackets for solid connections and made sure everything was aligned using a speed square and straight edge. All right, now that the frame's all done, it's time to tackle the last few components. First up, I need to make a case for the Pelton wheel to keep all that splashing water contained. Then I'll mount the generator. For the case, I split it into sections so it fit on my 3D printer. 
Once I had all the pieces, I super glued them together. To make it easier to attach the lid, I used a soldering iron to add brass inserts so I could screw it on securely. For a gasket, well, I kept it simple and just added some tape along the seams to help seal it. Then I mounted the case onto the frame using T-slot nuts. Now for the final part, mounting the generator. I designed a 3D printed motor mount that attaches to the frame using T-slot nuts. To transfer power, I added pulleys to both the pelt wheel shaft and the motor. The belt is tensioned using the frame. On the side of the case, I included an adjustable interchangeable nozzle mount, also 3D printed. This lets me easily swap out different hose nozzles for testing. Okay, the build is now complete. Now all that's left to do is to take this thing outside, hook it up, and see what it can do. To test the generator, I'm using a load tester. This device lets me adjust the current draw and see how it performs. At open circuit, the generator produces 18 volts, but as I increase the current, the voltage begins to drop. As you can see, it consistently outputs about 22 watts at 12 volts, which I'm extremely happy with. If I push the current too far, the voltage and eventually the power begin to drop significantly. I won't dive too deep into the technical details, but every generator has a power curve, which shows the most efficient operating range. For this generator, I designed it to peak near 12 volts, so I can use a car inverter to power AC appliances. Now, 22 watts isn't a ton of power, but it's definitely something. It's more than enough to charge batteries, power your phone, or light up a few bulbs, all just by running your garden hose. And that's pretty freaking cool, if you ask me. Well, there you have it, my mini hydroelectric generator. If you have any questions or want to know more, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.